everyone my name is andy so a uct medical student if you're a returning subscriber thank you thank you so much for watching one of my videos once again and if you are here for the second time or the third time but you still haven't subscribed please do the right thing and subscribe and if you are new here welcome i hope you do stay and become a part of my journey as i become dr andy so on today's video we're going to be talking about what to expect in first year of medical school at uct so i'm going to be sharing important information about registration the medical school campus itself and i'm going to give you a bit more detail about the courses that are being taken in medical school first year and i will then talk about the accommodation or rest situation for medical students i'm also going to be sharing with you what happens if you end up not getting funding meaning end up not paying for your school fees at all and what happens if you fail a course let's say now you got the final offer to study medicine at uct in january after your matric results have come out now you want to come to uct and register you're going to be given a registration date that you have to come and register by this date or on this date and if you do not show up during that day already your offer has been forfeited meaning it is given to someone else or you won't be able to register after that you date unless you've communicated with them that you're going to be late for whatever reason so when you get there you do not need any amount of money there is no registration fee that they ask you for you literally don't pay anything you do not pay for your student card you do not pay for you to be registered and access academic information you are being registered for free and you do not necessarily need to have a bursary at that point of registration for you to be registered you can be registered without having any form of funding approved so medical school is separate from uct i mean you get to understand this when you come to uct that there is uct and then there's medical school it sounds like two different universities because they operate so differently the campus is literally very very far from uct main campus and it's quite sad because all the fun and all the nice student life that you see on social media or on the movies it happens up there at upper campus not really at medical school another thing is that from moving now from like 20 30 40 classmates you have now 200 or over 200 classmates so it is something that you should you know keep at the back of your mind it's not really a huge thing but now you're going to be attending classes with like a large group of people unfortunately so the reason why i'm saying that is because you do not really get um enough individual attention especially when the lecturer is teaching sometimes you're scared of asking questions because like the class is just full another thing that people might know and some people might not know i didn't know that that in medical school it's not only medical students that are there you will find audiology students occupational therapy students physiotherapy students so it's a mix of students that are under the health sciences faculty and sometimes you will have classes with those students especially in first year because you'll be studying the same courses somewhere somehow so let's get into the academics do not expect to be saving lives in first year because you do absolutely no clinical work in first year you're basically a bsc student so calm down calm down it's really not that deep with that being said you do not need any stethoscopes any scrubs in first year you can obviously have lab codes for your practicals and tutorials but you do not really need all that clinical equipment and stuff like that so please in first year save yourself money you do not really need to go around buying stethoscope scrubs and all of those medical equipments because you are not really going to use them most of the time the things that you're going to use in tutorials they are going to offer you there up until you become a clinical student where they can tell you that okay definitely you need this and this and that from day to day but in first year really 
you really do not need any medical equipment so in first semester you want to be studying physics and chemistry this is one thing that i still don't understand up until today why in medicine you should be studying physics and chemistry i know they'll be giving you a lot of explanation about how you need to know your hydraulics in order for you to connect an iv line and all of that i still don't remember the hydraulics formula but i can still connect an iv line so i feel like it is completely nonsense to be studying physics and chemistry but unfortunately those are two of your courses that you're going to be doing in first year so the physics is more or less high school physics where you study forces hydraulics i'm not sure if we did electricity but most of the topics if not all of the topics that we did in that course were topics that we've done in metric in high school so i cannot say it is that hard even though people do fail it when it comes to chemistry it was also more or less high school chemistry with a lot of organic chemistry as well and also we had to go and attend practicals and we'll be doing titration at the lab and all of that stuff that's when you need your lab coat and we had tutorials as well and those tutorials i'm telling you they were so hard i was actually checking my marks now for first day i was like oh my god what did i get for chemistry and i'm seeing those 20 percent and 30 percent those tutorials were so so hard and the thing that is so painful is that they counted towards your final course mark but then you had exams and class test to you know make up for it but yeah we had tutorials and lab practicals as well along with the lectures so yeah that's what you do and you do it for first semester only which is like the first five months or six months of medical school and you have to pass it in order for you to progress to semester two also medical school timetable is a lot different from high school timetable in high school at seven o'clock you are already in class and in med school classes start at eight which is really really a nice thing about varsity you get to wake up late another thing we do not have a 10 o'clock break time like your high school break we only have an hour lunch from like one to two depending on how the day is and another thing that sucks is that your classes no longer end at two they will go up until four or five so along with physics and chemistry you're going to be studying human biology of which it is what we all expect it is basically more or less like life sciences but only focusing on like the life cycle the humans you know i'm going to be studying about plants and the earth and all of that stuff but it is definitely not like medicine you're not going to be studying about any diseases and stuff you're going to be there studying about the cell about the mitochondria being the powerhouse of the cell you're going to be studying the basics of biology and you're going to be having practicals as well where you are going to be using like microscopes if you're studying about cells and your tissues and you're going to have group sessions where you discuss your schoolwork it is called pbl and i know like 50 percent of you who are watching this video and are going to study medicine at UCT, you are not gonna like pbl some people find it very useful but some people find it very boring and very much filled with a lot of pressure because you are given sort of like a task or a homework according to the topics that you are you are studying or your lectures in class and then you come as a group of like eight people and you discuss or answer those questions another course which is the last course in first year so you get to do four courses in first year which is physics chemistry human biology and this course called becoming a professional so basically this course is teaching you how to behave as a professional how to dress how to interact with people in a professional way and when you get to semester two it is now called becoming a health professional now they're going to be sharing with you how to treat patients how to act as a health professional the principles 
and all of that stuff it is more like lo of medicine you also get to study family medicine as well of which i barely remember what we did in that course and you get to study another course it's like they call it ibs but it's like biology most of it that you're gonna be doing in semester two is biochemistry 80 percent of your work is biochemistry and again you are going to continue with afrikaans and isikosa so i didn't explain earlier the reason why you study afrikaans and isikosa is because as a doctor you need to be able to communicate with your patients and if you are studying in the western cape most of the population is Kosa or Afrikaans speaking so you need to be equipped to be able to communicate with them in their native languages so that's why we take these languages so it doesn't matter whether you did Afrikaans or is Kosa in high school you have to take these courses it's not an elective it is compulsory and what we learn it's not really basics of hi how are you and i'm running i'm eating you know like those general communication it's more communicating to a patient based like um knowing the patient's symptoms asking them their chronic illnesses whether they're taking medication what type of pain they're experiencing so it is around the clinical or the medical terms so it might happen that you studied isoclosa or africans in high school but you do not know what a gallbladder is in africans or in isoclosa and you might not know the name of illnesses and all the internal organs and medication in those kind of languages so do not take that course for granted so let's talk about race accommodation so as you apply for a place to study you are going to simultaneously apply for accommodation it is part of the application process right and if you are doing first year you are most likely to be placed in the first tier races which is mostly self-catering and you can't get a race offer without getting an academic offer and if it happens that you have an academic offer but you do not have a race offer please do not worry please don't delay yourself from coming or now choose to go to another university for example come to uct and register they do give you a place to stay for like two to three weeks while you are waiting for a space to open up for you because it happens that people are given a place to stay at risk but they end up not showing up or they end up choosing another university so during those two to three weeks the spaces are opening and you get to go to the housing department physically to go and apply for a place to stay so if it happens that you got the academic offer but you still don't have any race offer please do not hesitate come and register most of the time you end up getting a race offer as time goes so there are races that are for medical students which are close to medical school one of them is clarinas there's also rochester and medical race so it might happen that you do not get any of those races but you are a medical student it happened to me i was offered a race offer along with my second option of study of which i think it was like bsc and i got to stay at a race where there were literally no medical students i think we were only like three medical students but the rest was like 10 to 15 minutes walk away from medical school so it was not really such a big deal then in second year you get to be moved to a race in med school or you can appeal that i am a medical student can i please be moved to a race that is close to medical school as the time goes also i need to mention that you have access to journeys which is like a uct transport system that goes from race to race and from race to campus so if it happens that you stay a bit far away from medical school you can catch that bus and come attend your classes it's very much convenient so you really really do not have to be worried so much about the race offer you got as long as you get the race offer be happy what happens if you do not have any funding meaning you do not have any bus are you paying for your fees nsfas rejected you or you didn't apply for nsfas and now you end up not paying for your fees literally for the whole year 
one thing they will do is that they will send you fees statement every month updating you how much you owe it is possible that you're going to be academically excluded they might not allow you to sit down for your final exams they might not allow you to see your final results if you sit down for your exams and another important thing is you will not be able to register for the following year that is why i emphasize a lot on applying for bursaries i made a video about bursaries for medical students so if you haven't checked that video out i will link it up here so that you can go check it after this video and make sure you apply to as many bursaries as possible what happens if you fail a course in first year meaning you got less than 50 percent it can be any of these courses that i mentioned if you fail one course in first year you are taken straight to the extended program which means that you're going to be adding a year on top of your six years and now you're going to be doing this course that you failed throughout the following year let me make a practical example let's say now you're studying physics and chemistry hub and becoming a professional and then you pass everything but you fail chemistry what's going to happen is that you're going to be studying chemistry from july that year and first year if you were studying chemistry from january to july with everyone along with the other courses and then you write in june for example, and you pass everything, but you fail chemistry. In semester two, you're gonna have to start studying chemistry up until next year, end of semester one. I hope it makes sense. You're gonna be studying chemistry for, for a year from like that July in first year up until June the following year. And now you're gonna be delayed for a year because everyone else is doing semester two new courses and now it's going to second year their first semester but you are still studying chemistry and then you're going to join the previous class which is the upcoming first year and now you're going to be in a new class with new people because you are kind of like left behind so that is one huge thing to think about especially when it comes to people who have like bursaries to keep that it is possible that if you fail you're going to be adding a year and some people end up losing their funding so yeah and it is a very very common thing that people fail first semester and first year and this applies to literally first year second year and third year if you fail any course that you are doing you are going to repeat the whole year so we've come to the end of the video i hope you found the video very useful if you did please give it a thumbs up and share with your friends and please do not forget to subscribe to my youtube channel i'll see you again on another video bye